What's up guys, and welcome back to Laugh Napkin, where we look at real life stories from some of the best subreddits. And today we're back in the subreddit, r slash pro revenge, with a story called Jackass Manager Gets His Comeuppance. But before we start the story, I want to say thanks to everyone for all your support in the comments of yesterday's video. You guys are the best, and it's good to be back. Now let's get into the story. Entirely too many years ago, I started to work at a fast food company. Let's call it Southern State Not Baked Poultry which is short for Kentucky Fried Chicken, let's be real. Southern State Not Baked Poultry wasn't a bad first job. I was 16, and the assistant manager at the location was my best friend's stepdad. So we took what was tedious and menial and tried to make it fun. He was actually a really good manager and generally cared about the people who worked for him. We would do silly stuff before the store opened while we were doing prep. He would have music playing loudly from his office. As long as everything got done and done well, he didn't really care if we had fun doing it. We'll call him Larry. This story is not about him though. This story is about our store manager. We'll call him Tim. Tim was the exact opposite of our assistant manager. Everything had to be taken seriously. Fun was outlawed. I generally hated working with Tim. Tim was an egocentric, power hungry, petty little man with delusions of grandeur because he was a manager for Southern State Not Baked Poultry. Woo hoo, good for you Tim. Tim's approach to managing was to work the employee until they burned out and when they did, fire them and hire someone else. Needless to say, morale when Tim worked was in the garbage. Tim hated that Cruz would prefer working with Larry instead of him. He hated that Cruz had fun when Larry was working. He hated that our store's numbers were always better when Larry worked. Mostly, he just hated everyone. But one thing that he absolutely hated was a silly little thing Larry did. If it was before the restaurant opened, he would stick his tongue between his teeth and lower lip and shout out a Hi, redacted. To whichever ploy had just walked in. It sounded absolutely ridiculous. And I would always do the same thing back, which ended up sounding something like, Hi, mommy. A perfect example of what an ass Tim was is this. There was a young woman who, due to a variety of stressors, attempted to commit suicide after a particularly grueling shift working with Tim. After she had recovered, she came back for her last paycheck and Larry was working. Not a coincidence, she called the store to find out what day he was working. So Larry sat her down out in the lobby, bought her lunch, brought her last check out, and sat and talked with her for about an hour. It was after the lunch rush and he had the time, so he made sure she was doing okay now, talked about whatever she wanted to talk about. By the time she left, she was smiling, but had tears on her cheeks. She had never had someone just sit and listen and let her talk about everything that was going on. Well, the next day Tim had come in and hauled Larry into the office. His words, and I can quote them exactly because the office was a tiny little cube with no ceiling, just a place to stash paperwork and a computer, where the next time the suicide queen comes in, tell her to do it right next time. So now you have a clear picture of exactly how petty and vindictive this little man was. Here's where the revenge starts. We were scheduled to have the regional and national bigwigs for Southern State Not Baked Poultry come through our area for an annual inspection. Tim had his eyes set on being one of those big wigs, at least for the region. Why wouldn't he be? He did everything by the book. That automatically made him a good manager, at least in his eyes. Everything had a checklist and a procedure and a set of written instructions in the book. And if you didn't meet the expectations set forth in the book, well, Tim would yell at you and berate you because that's how a manager manages, you see? Well, before the big wigs got to our store, we knew what day they would be coming Several of us had agreed that on the day that they came through, we would all screw up just enough to get Tim to blow his cool. Because our regional manager and the national bigwigs all believed that Southern State Not Baked Poultry was a family company and that employees were valuable team members. The day in question arrived and the bigwigs were there for their big tour. Whoops, one of the fryers hadn't had the oil replaced last night. Oh look, the shaker table hadn't been cleaned. Darn it. We've got way too much coleslaw made up, and we won't get through it before we have to toss it. Crap, we don't have enough poultry in the cooker to fulfill the lunch rush. Man, someone forgot to preheat the second cooker. You get the picture. After the second time, I took a minute too long to get a basket of poultry into the cooker. Tim absolutely lost his shit. Yelling, cursing, throwing things, he actually physically pushed me away from the breading station in the middle of the lunch rush, while the regional manager and several bigwigs from National stood there, while we had a line several people deep at both registers, and a lobby full of people eating. 
Tim stood there gulping like a fish. His mouth was moving like he was trying to say something, but no sounds were coming out. The room was absolutely quiet other than the beeping of a fryer that was done. I looked at Tim. This was the moment we had all been gearing up for. I looked down at where he had pushed me, a set of handprints and flour on my chest. And I cut loose into him. Yelled at him that I quit, took off my apron and threw it at him. Told him I was tired of his abuse, of his poor management, of how he single-handedly drove morale through the floor every time he walked through the doors. How he was a crappy excuse for a manager, and that if he didn't have Larry and a couple of good shift leads, he'd have driven the location out of business a long time ago. All the color drained from his face, and he bolted to the office cube. The national and regional folks ended up comping everyone's meals that were in the restaurant. Interestingly enough, Tim was not fired, but he was demoted to assistant manager. Larry was promoted to manager. About 10 years later, I was working at my current job as an EMT. We had just dropped a patient off at the hospital that was across the street from the same restaurant, and my partner was hungry, so we drove across the street and pulled in. Now, I hadn't set foot in that restaurant since the day I had quit. But lo and behold, who is working the counter but Tim himself? And his name tag still shows assistant manager. The restaurant was empty since it was between lunch and dinner time, and I just couldn't help myself. I stuck my tongue between my teeth and lower lip, and as loud as I could, I shouted, Hi, twin! Haven't been back there since, but that was around 12 years ago. I'm willing to bet he's still the assistant manager there. Oh, Timmy, Timmy, Tim, I hope you learned your lesson, buddy. Being a dick to your workers is not how you manage. All right, I think we have time for another story, so I'm going to pull out of r slash pro revenge, and let's see, I think there was one in r slash malicious compliance that I wanted to check out. So this one's titled, Force Me to Take a Useless Sports Physical? I'll Make Sure I Fail It. Some background. In high school, I went to an academic magnet school. Essentially, it was a public school ran like a private school. You had to have certain test scores to get in. No bus transportation, since it was for the whole county. Way stricter dress code than all the other schools in the district. And they were able to have a ton of extra rules because it was a choice school. Now, I was the first graduating class. I was there the first year it opened. At that time, it was 5th to ninth grade. And I started as a freshman. The second year they had completed the elementary wing, so it was K-10. to They added grades until my senior year, when it was finally K-12. to As the school grew, it continued to add more policies. My sophomore year, the school's second year being open, they began a new policy where all students 7th grade and above had to be on a sports team everywhere. I thought this was really, really stupid. I hated it. I'm not an athlete. I was in other clubs, and I was getting increasingly involved with my church. Being the mature 16 year old I was, my initial plan was to join a team and have a bad attitude, like an awful evangelistically bad attitude so that no one would have any fun, and this would prove to the school how awful this rule was. Instead, for all the lazy kids like me, they started a school walking team. It wasn't power walking, just regular walking. We had to walk around the neighborhood for about 45 minutes three times a week after school. I was fine with this, I didn't mind walking. Of course there was an adult coach. But since the whole thing was ridiculous anyways, my friend and I declared ourselves as co-captains. This mostly consisted in telling the middle schoolers to walk faster. No one else considered us co-captains, but we did, and that's all that mattered to us since it was all a joke anyways. I did that my sophomore and junior years, but fast forward to my senior year. I was 18, working part-time about 15 to 20 hours a week. I was super involved in my church, and my family was a chaotic mess of dysfunction that traumatized me in numerous ways. They finally enforced a state law that everyone on a sports team had to have an annual physical on file. I didn't really bother with this since it wasn't really a sport anyway. Eventually, they came to me and said that it was so late in the season that even if I got a physical, I would need to pick a different sport in the winter or spring. Walking team was a fall sport. I essentially said, screw this. I had enough other things in my life to deal with, and I didn't want to put up with this crap anymore. I decided to do exactly what they say and get the physical. I also decided I would do my best to fail it. So eventually when I saw a doctor, it's important to note that I didn't have a primary care doctor at the time. That's why I didn't get a physical before then. So I just went to some little walk-in clinic, and I tell them I need a sports physical. I didn't tell them what the sport was. Now as I was filling out the patient history form, I answered truthfully. 
I did not lie, but I did not provide any context. So I checked yes to her history of asthma, mostly from when I was a kid, severe seasonal allergies, and a history of seizures. See, when I was 13, I had a couple dozen seizures in a day or two. No one knew what was going on, and eventually I was diagnosed with epilepsy, specifically having absent seizures. Since then, I had been taking anticonvulsants every day. As far as I'm aware, even 20 years after that initial episode, I'm not sure I've had a full-blown seizure since then. It's literally the mildest case of epilepsy I've ever heard of. The doctor does a quick physical exam, mostly vitals and similar things. As she looks at my patient history form, she asks about the seizures. I explain that I was diagnosed with epilepsy, I take anticonvulsants, and I have a neurologist I see about once or twice a year. She says, well, I can't pass you until I hear from your neurologist. I basically hopped out of the chair, happily said thank you, and walked out. I never did contact a neurologist, instead I just gave the paperwork to the school. And that's how I, a relatively healthy 18 year old, got medically disqualified from the school walking team. That's pretty clever. Let me know if you guys have any other clever ways on how you can get disqualified from the school walking team or any sports in school another way. Shoot your answers down in the comments. And I think that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed these stories. And I look forward to reading more stories with you, hopefully tomorrow. So, I'll see you guys in the next video.